But above all, we want you to know that no matter where you've been, no matter where you are, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And there's a place for you here. So get ready. Your experience starts now. Well, good morning, Open Door Church. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Come on. We're still operating under the government authority. Nobody can really come to church right now, except for those that are bold and brave. But um, we're going to um, just open with a word of prayer and trust that uh, the Lord will just meet us in a special way today. So let's just bow our heads. If you want to go ahead and stand up, you can. Lord, we just come in Jesus' name right now. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. We thank you for those that are watching at home, Lord, uh, locally and across the country and around the world because we know people are watching everywhere. But, Lord, we just pray, Lord, with our hearts heavy with what's going on with the virus and, and the injustices that are in the world. And we just pray, God, that you would cause us, cause us to come to the foot of the cross, cause us to come to the place of unification, Lord of peace we just ask you Lord just to move on the hearts of every person we pray God for healing to come pray for restoration reconciliation Lord and God we just pray today that as we worship you Lord we will be mindful Lord of all that you've done for us and Lord all that you are doing for us right now and all that you're going to do for us in the future but we just pray God that you would just touch each person by the Holy Spirit today just invade our lives, invade our space, invade the world that we live in. Let your spirit, Lord, cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. But we ask you, Lord, cause light to come in darkness. We call, ask you, Lord God, to cause joy to come to sadness. We ask you, Lord, for the oil of joy for a morning. The spirit of praise for those that are in heaviness. We ask you right now, Lord, just to be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. But before you sit back down, we're going to worship in just a moment. But we just want to say good morning to everyone that's here and to all those that are watching live with us at home. Um, we don't have anything for our children or nurseries right now, so most folks are staying home with their kids. A lot of the parents are alternating who's going to be here uh, from week to week. But... We're excited about what the Lord is doing. We're excited about being able to start opening up little by little. And for those of you that are guests today, we're grateful that you're here with us. Uh, scripture the Lord gave me this morning that I shared with um, a lot of people that follow us is, says in Ephesians 4, 3, it says, Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace. Being of one body, one spirit, as you were called to the same glorious hope of this divine destiny. But I love it. It says, guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit. We need to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're a first-time visitor here in the house or you're a first-time visitor online, we'd like to ask you to do something for us. To get your phone out and just type in 757-320-5615. I'll say that again. We're going to put it on the screen for you. 757-320-5615. What that is, that's the text to connect. And if you do that, you'll be up to date with what's going on here when we're having services. And if we change the dynamic of the services, it's exactly what we're doing. But we're, we're excited about those that are watching, that are waiting to come in anticipation. Some people are afraid of the mask, but just so you know that if you come in the door, once you hit your seat, you can take your mask off and just worship. So you don't have to wear it very, very long. But again, we'd like to invite you to come. Uh, we'd like to thank all those that have been supporting the church throughout this entire time. I think we're about 14 or 16, 15 weeks in, I'm not for sure, something like that. It's been a long time. But for those of you that have been uh, at home supporting us financially, those of you that are here today that continue to support us financially, I, I, we're just overwhelmed and blessed by the consistency of every single person to, to continue to help us here. And um, 
We just want to encourage you to keep doing that for us because uh, we, we're doing stuff here. We still have to keep the operations going. But for those of you that hadn't been, we've, we've painted the walls. We finished the foyer, the bathrooms, the floors have been redone. Thankfully, so many uh, helpers have come to serve here in the house to help us. So we thank all of you po folks that have helped, but we also thank those of you that are supported financially. And if you want to give financially, you can give to 757-320-5555. That's pretty simple. 757-320-5555. You can give through your bank. You can text to this number here, or you can go online to our website and give. All those ways will help. And also, you can just do it the old-fashioned way. Get an envelope, write a check, throw cash in a basket on the way out the door. All those things work. So we appreciate all of you that have continued to give. Uh, I was talking to Chad this morning over on the base, and he said, I just like to, he says, the only thing I still write a check for, and my wife still writes a check. It's kind of like feeling that, as Dave Ramsey says, you got to feel that and give that, you know. It's like sowing seed in the ground, you know. You can't text the seed into the ground. And you got to put the tomatoes in the ground. you got to put the squash, you got to put it in the ground. You just th so it's something about putting it in. My, my wife says she likes to get her hands dirty. She says, I, I love the smell of dirt. I'm thinking, What's wrong with you? You know, but she does, she's like, she says, smell that dirt when she's digging in her yard. So she's happy when she's smelling dirt. <laughs> Maybe I just should take showers. I don't know. <laughs> All right. But um, again, if anybody wants to come out during the week and help us here at the church, we're still uh, doing a lot of the cleaning and the maintenance ourselves. And for those of you that have helped through the, through the, through the last three months, then we appreciate that as well. But um, we're going to introduce our worship team, Brandis, and the rest of the crew here. This is just part of our team, so if you come week to week, you'll see different groups. But um, let's get ready to worship. So let's give the Lord a hand as Brandis gets ready to lead us, all right? Turn me around, place my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cause he picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Pick me up and he turned me around, place my feet on solid ground. So good, so so good to me. 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 So
to me, Jesus. Yeah, you've been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good. He picked me up. Yeah, he picked me up and he turned me around. Placed my feet on the solid ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pick me up and he turned me around. Place my feet on the solid ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, he picked me up and he turned me around. Place my feet on the solid ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, he picked me up and he turned me around. Place my feet on the solid ground. Hallelujah. 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 He's been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me, Jesus. So good to me, so good, so so good to me, so good, so so good to me, Jesus. Yeah, he's been so good, so so good to me, so good, so so good to me, so good, so so good to me. Yeah, pick me up and he turned me around, place my feet on the solid ground, hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah, he picked me up and he turned me around, placed my feet on a solid ground, hallelujah, 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 yeah, he picked me up and he turned me around, placed my feet on a solid ground, hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, he picked me up and he turned me around, Crown, hallelujah. Yeah, can you sing? He's been, he's been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me, Jesus. Yeah, he's been, yeah, so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me, Jesus. Cause you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh. still being moved strongholds are still being loosed 
God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. And giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do.
of the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big clap offering. We are so happy to be in God's house today. I miss being in the house of the Lord with the people of God. So you may be seated. All right. It is great to be here our third week being here at, at church and it is just so good to be here. But I'll tell you, I've just really missed the body. I've missed the children. I've missed our elderly people and all those that have not been able to come because of uh, limitations and no nursery and children's workers. But hopefully we're going to be entering into phase three very soon. <laughs> we are all looking forward to that where we can take down some of our restrictions and uh, 
begin to just operate and function again as the body of Christ and the people of God and just be free, all right? Aren't you uh, happy that we live in a country of freedom and liberty, so we're all ready to get back to liberty and freedom for all? So um, it is good to be here. I know we're doing our services a little bit shorter, so we're not having all of our normal announcements and all of that. But just real quick, I do want to mention if there's any guests or visitors here. I know we have one, Shauna from the Y. So glad to have you here. So she already connected with us, and uh, good to have you today, Shauna. I'm glad you're visiting. <laughs> That's great. She's my Zumba buddy. <laughs> yeah, go Zumba. So, all right, well, this morning, um, I just want you, if you have your Bible or your phone or whatever, to turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 7 through 8. And uh, we're going to start here this uh, Tuesday morning in my devotions. I just was reading uh, in the book of Jeremiah, and uh, I just paused for a minute, and I kind of closed my eyes, and I was just asking the Lord, you know, just kind of meditating on the Lord and what I had been reading. And I thought about, um, uh, you know, the scriptures, different scriptures that talk about us being a tree planted by water. And so I opened up my eyes and I read the next verse in Jeremiah, and it was this verse. And it said, But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. And so I said, thank you, Lord. I just thought about us being like trees planted by the water. And I read this verse and I'm like, I know that is what I'm supposed to preach on on Sunday. So I'm thankful for that. So I just want to look at this verse a minute. And it says that blessed are the people who trust in the Lord. Blessed means showered with divine favor. Uh, people that are rained down on. Um, but I thought it was interesting because it also the word blessed means barak which means to kneel and um, I thought about the scripture that says come let us worship and bow down let's kneel before the Lord our maker because he is our God we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand and you know you cannot help but um, know that you know today just within two weeks ago that we saw you know the atrocious person that kneeled on the neck of a man and took his life and he knelt on the neck of a human being and took his life and we saw i think everybody with just shock and uh, the atrocity that was done cold calloused calculating and i thought the mantra of this generation is in a world where you can be anything be kind and where we saw all across the world, anybody that watched that video, the incredible opposite of being kind, but being cold, cal callous, and calculated to take a human being's life. And so he you know, knelt on that man's neck for almost nine minutes. And then we see a lot of people kneel, taking a knee in the sports arena because they don't want to sing the national anthem. And they're taking a knee in protest to that for our nation because they're, they're not agreeing what is going on in our nation. But I'm here to tell us this morning, as the saints of God and the people of God, we need to take a knee in the presence of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we need to bow our knee to the name under whom all of heaven and earth is named, the name of Jesus. And we need to cry out to God and call out to God in prayer for our nation and for what is going on in our nation and, and the sowing of discord and division. And we need to cry out to God for this land and for every man and woman that lives in the United States of America and let the Lord hear our voices and our cries and our petition because the worst thing that we could ever be in this time is uh, complacent 
and is uh, uninvolved and un disinterested in what is going on. So I believe as the people of God, we need to pray like never before. You know, growing up when uh, watching movies and Shirley Temple and Timmy and Lassie and all those shows, the last thing the kids did before they went to bed was knelt beside their bed and prayed. And that was the example that I grew up with, kneeling beside your bed at night and saying your prayers. And so I dare say that on the news and TV and media that that's not what kids are seeing. They're not seeing children kneeling beside their beds and praying before they get into bed. That hasn't been the model. That hasn't been the example. And I think you can agree with me that each decade that I've been alive, in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, it seems to me like more and more what we're watching and what we're ingesting is violence. It's violence, and we go to the weekends every movie, and we watch violence and brutality, and it's our heroes, and it's the good guys and the bad guys participating in violence and brutality. And so we've lived on a steady of diet of that for decades now, and I think that everybody is tired of it and saying something has to change, that that's not our heroes and that's not the way we want to live in cruelty and violence and brutality and so we just need um, to remember that we need to bow our knees in prayer and we need to set good models and examples for our children to pray and so he says blessed are those that trust in the Lord and one of the words for that means I salute you and so what the writer here was saying Jeremiah is saying I salute those that salute the Lord. I salute the, you that are saluting the Lord as your highest ranking officer, as the one who is ruling and reigning over all things. He said, you're blessed. I salute you because you salute the Lord because God is the God in heaven above and he is the one that you are honoring and you are looking to. And so you are blessed, he said, and who put their hope and their confidence in the Lord. And so this passage is telling us that we need to be like trees, putting our hope and our confidence and our security in the Lord that he is our strength and he is the one and so as believers we plant ourselves beside the river of God the river of living water and he says that our roots are supposed to go down deep and our roots are supposed to stretch and extend towards that river and our roots are supposed to in the time of drought and in every season that we're gonna just dig a little deeper Deeper. And it truly is the time in our lives where we need to dig a little deeper in our roots and we need to extend them that we can reach the river of God as our source, as our strength, as our substance in this time where we need to be fruitful and we need to be fruitful and have leaves that bring healing to the nations. And so uh, the Bible says, draw near to God and I will draw near to you. And so we need to dig deep and stretch towards the Lord and begin to draw from the well that runs deep and from the waters that can quench our thirst and give us answers and give us wisdom and give us direction and help us be fruitful in this time of drought. And so we want to be people that are immovable and unshakable, whose security is in the Lord. And we're not going to be fearful or anxious or worried, though it is very difficult not to be on some of the things that are going on. It's very difficult to not be worried and not be anxious because of what is going on. But those who depend on the Lord, put their hope and trust in God, we can be sure that we're going to stand strong and firm and steady and uh, not be movable and not be shakable in this time that we are walking through. And so um, here in Ephesians 6 and uh, 10 through 13, 
He says, uh, finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And so he says, finally, brothers, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And so it says, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against invisible enemies, spiritual wickedness in high places. And so we have to realize that our enemy in this day and age that we are living in, there are invisible enemies at work principalities and powers that need to be brought down that the Lord wants to remove from over our land over our nations over our families they are strongholds that need to be brought down through prayer and intercession and fasting that these things need to be dethroned that the kingdom of God that Jesus can be enthroned in his greatness and his power because there are forces at work trying to take uh, our freedom, our liberty, our nation, our families, our communities. And so we recognize that our real enemy is spiritual. It's in a spiritual realm, but he does use people who are yielded as instruments. And so we are recognizing that and we are going to pray and intercede and bow our knee and let our voice be heard to God who can move and dethrone these things and so the Lord said to Jeremiah Jeremiah I called you to be a prophet that you would uh, plant and you would sow he said and you would tear down and you would root up and so God wants there to be people that can tear down some things that were constructed that God never intended to be constructed and that we can uproot Things that have been rooted in our past, in our lives, in our nation, in the nations of the world that have been there maybe for decades, maybe for centuries, and they're deeply rooted in our culture, and they need to be uprooted. And so we've been removing bushes in the front of our house that have been there for 20 years, and pastor cut them down and tore them up. And now we're replanting some new plants. But when I'm trying to plant, I come on one of those roots, and I like to get my hands in the dirt, and I like to pull on those roots. And there is something very fulfilling and very satisfying when one of those roots breaks loose and I'm able to pull it out of the ground and there's rich soil where that was once there where roots something else was planted that I don't want anymore and so so it is in our nation so it is in our land so it is in our lives there are things that are deeply rooted that we need to grab a hold of in prayer in fasting in intercession and we need to uproot those things that God can plant the kingdom of God righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost is the kingdom so God wants to tear down strongholds and the Bible says that we would be immovable and unshaken so I'm planted beside that river immovable unshakable because the word says that God will shake everything that can be shaken so things are pretty shaken up right now we're getting pretty shaken up right now aren't we viruses and all the other things the past two weeks which are horrendous and shaken but God shakes everything that can be shaken and whatever is not of God it, it's not gonna stand it cannot stand only God and his word will stand it's settled forever in heaven it's settled forever in heaven okay so um, all these things that are shaking us and want to move us but we're trees planted beside the river and our roots go deep and they stretch wide and you know why because God wants to extend and enlarge his kingdom 
God wants to extend and enlarge his kingdom. So if we're not deeply rooted and we're not stretching and reaching and we're not tearing down and we're not pulling up, then uh, we're not helping God extend his kingdom. And so we want to be that in this day. I thought about this morning upstairs and um, I was just praying before the service and I was reminded about the um, passage in the Old Testament where they captured the ark of God. It was the little box of God that had the Ten Commandments and it represented the presence of God. The Philistines, they, uh, they captured it and they put it in the temple with their God, Dagon, it was his name. He was, had a fish head and a man's body and they set it up in the temple and the next day when they came in, Dagon fell down. Dagon had fallen down that idol, because he could not stand in the same room with the ark of God, which represented God's presence. And they put it back up again, and they came back the next day. And the next day, that statue of that fish God fell down and was broken because nothing and nobody can stand with the presence of God. He is the highest authority in every room and in every place when jesus walked into the temple in the new testament even the doctors of the law could not uh, uh, not recognize his authority because he had he was the highest ranking officer in every room and in every place and so at the name of jesus every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is the lord so in the shaking and in the moving let the things that are not of God go. Let them fall down. Let them come crashing down. All those other false ideas and false gods and all those things that need to come down. Let them come down and begin to build according to the word of God, according to the pattern that we see in his scriptures. And so uh, we are wrestling again against something else. And so when the storms come and the power goes out, because the storms are going to come, and when the power goes out, who are the people that survive the most? Who are the people that get by in the storms? When we all lose power, when the, uh, the lights go out, it is the people that have the generators are the ones that make it through the storms. The people, everybody scrambles when there's a storm and the power goes out. They all run to Lowe's to try to purchase a generator, but they're all gone because everybody already got them. So the people that already had the generators, they have the power. And so we need to make sure we have the generator, we have the power that when the storm come and when the lights go out, that hopefully it's not just a little candle or it's not a little flashlight, but that we have invested in the things that are immovable and unshakable, that we've invested in the presence of God and the power of God and the authority of his word, that we can uh, make it through every storm and have the power of God to be able to walk through uh, perilous times and uh, and raging storms and sometimes you don't know how long the power is going to go out you know there have been times I've lived here in Suffolk where not in our home but around here that it's been out for two or three weeks no power so we're going to make sure as the people of God that we have power that we are because we're planted beside the river we're planted beside the generator our roots are going deep and we're tapping in to that power source that powerful river of god and so first corinthians 15 58 says therefore my beloved brethren be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as you know your labor's not in vain in the lord so again steadfast immovable we are immovable none of these things that are going on are going to move us because we're rooted and grounded and another scripture says we're to be rooted and grounded in love love is the soil that the plants of the Lord grows in love is the soil we are to be rooted and grounded in we're not going to root ourselves in hatred we're not going to plant ourselves in the soil of hatred and discord and disunity. We're going to plant ourselves in the soil of love, and our tree of righteousness is going to grow. And so he says, be steadfast, unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. And so he says, the work of the Lord. And I thought about that, and I thought the Lord is in a building program. And so when Jesus was a little boy 
and he was 12 years old, and they went down to the temple for the Passover. They were in a big caravan, and the family was all there together, and they all left to go home. And when they got down the road, Mary and Joseph couldn't find Jesus. Well, I thought he was with you. No, I thought he was with you. And they were like, any parents, you panic. Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? We did that before. We've left Harrison here at the church. You know, I thought that a pastor had him. He thought that Aunt Deb had him. We got to the Golden Corral and we looked around and nobody had Harrison. And so we came racing back to the church. We called, I think that's when cell phones were like the size of a regular big phone. And the Ralstons were still here locking up and they had Harrison. And uh, another time I went to the beach with the Browns and their th she had her three kids and I had my three and we left the beach and washed off our feet and we started walking to the car and we look around, where's Harrison? Where's Harrison? He's not there. I guess it must be a Harrison thing, <laughs> the baby of the family. And, you know, I look in every direction and it's wall to wall people. It's just wall to And I'm like, I don't even know what direction to look at. And it's terrifying, and the fear and the panic and the horror that goes through you. So I just backtracked our steps, and back at the fountain where we were washing our feet off is Harrison washing the sand off of his feet. But it, it's a terrifying experience, and I'm sure Mary and Joseph did not know where their son was. And so they got back to the temple, and they said, you know, son, why have you done this to us? Why have you done this? And he said, didn't you know I had to be about my father's business. So even at 12, Jesus had a sense of purpose and destiny and calling to be about the father's business. It says here in the passage I just read that we're to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. And so, you know, when I was a uh, teenager, my dad in between ninth and 10th grade, he bought a hardware store. He had managed a couple of them before in his life, and he purchased a hardware store. And so he had five daughters and a son, and it was a family-owned business. So it was just him and my mom that worked in it. It was one of those old-fashioned, dirty hardware stores. And uh, so he needed somebody to work in the store. And so guess who got voluntold? <laughs> And yeah, voluntold, yeah. And so uh, it had one of those nail bins. They had all those bins of nails, and you had to reach your hand in and pull them out and put them on a scale, those old-fashioned ones, weigh out the nails, put them in a bag, you know, add all that up. And so, you know, as a 16-year-old girl with nail polish on and putting my hand in the you know, nails and putting it on the scale and working in this dirty hardware store. Why? Because it was my father's business. Because my dad needed me. My father needed me in the family business. Our father needs us. Our father needs us in the family business. Our Father wants to extend the family business. And so Jesus thought about the Father's business. And he started educating himself in the temple with the doctors and prepared himself to be launched into the Father's business. And he began to extend the kingdom of God. But we are sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. And Jesus, as that perfect example, said, I only do the things I see my father do. I only say the things I hear my father say. And so Jesus, and here's a whole nother issue, had a father present in his life. Every single day, the father was present in Jesus' life. And so fatherlessness is a whole nother issue in this generation and in all the topics we've been discussing. And so our Father, who art in heaven, we have to be about his business. And even if you don't have an earthly father, we have a heavenly father. And we 
or to be about his business. We're not working to earn our salvation. That's already been purchased by the blood of Jesus. But we are working for our Father in his business because we love him. Because we love him. Because we want to extend the kingdom of righteousness, of peace, and of joy. And so Jesus was our great example. He was our model. He was the one, and he's still in the uh, business of building lives. And, you know, that he grew up and was a carpenter's son. Uh, Joseph was his father, and so he became a builder. And so can I just uh, put out there to you and me that we need to get in a building program, not physically, but spiritually building lives, that we need to be edifying and building. The word edify means to build up. And so we need to be building up people. We need to be building. Uh, my son, Nicholas, used to walk around with a hammer in his hand say, I want to build something. I want to build something. I just want to build something. And so it should be the desire of our heart that we want to build something because the Lord is building, the Bible says, a temple, a holy house habitation for him, putting brick to brick. He's building us together as a holy habitation for the Lord. So we're entering into the Father's business. We're entering into the building program. And so whether we're an apprentice or whether we're like Paul, a wise master builder, he called himself, we all are engaged in the Father's building of edifying and building and joining people together and building the kingdom of God and joining lives and joining people together. And um, so, you know, the Bible talks about, um, I think about the scripture written down here. Uh, let me see here. It is Ephesians. No, that's not the right one. But I will just tell it to you. It is in the book of Ephesians, and it said that... Uh, that the Lord broke down the middle wall of partition that was between the Jews and between the Gentiles. So that was the two people that were at odds, the Jews and the Gentiles. And so today in our nation, you know, the issue is black and white. But Jesus, by the blood of his cross, tore down the middle wall of partition that separated and that divided us. He tore down that middle wall of animosity and hate and anger by the blood of his cross because he did the Father's work of joining lives together. And so on, on Tuesday when I'm sitting in my chair thinking about this passage and close my eyes, I thought about a song I probably haven't heard since the 80s or 90s, and it was Ebony and Ivory written by Paul McCartney. Ebony and Ivory, living side by side on my piano, making harmony. Lord, why can't we? Lord, why can't we? Ebony and Ivory in perfect harmony. Lord, why can't we? We can. It's the business, the Father's business of constructing and joining us together. Every nation, every race, every people group, it is the Father's business. It is, and we are called to enter into his business, joining people together, not tearing people apart. So we are to get involved in the Father's business. We're to get to work and bring healing because that tree planted, you know, in the book of Revelation, it said the leaves were for the healing of the nations. And so we need to heal the nations. We need to heal people that have been hurt and people who have been wounded. And if it is our African-American brothers and sisters and fellow citizens in this country, then we need to work hard to heal any wounds or any hurts that have ever been inflicted on them or any other people group or people of color that have felt rejected. And so, you know, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is Ephesians 1, 6, where he has made us accepted in the beloved. And Jesus, as our great high priest, knew what it felt like to be rejected. Because the Bible says in Isaiah, he was rejected and he was despised, and we hid our faces from him. And so our great high priest knows what it feels like to suffer rejection. 
And he knows what it is to make people accept it. So what we always say here at Open Door, when people walk in the doors, they should be immediately accepted. 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 And so because the Father has accepted everyone, we are to accept everyone and join ourselves together, a holy habitation for the Lord. And so we are not going to uh, let rejection um, stand in the way, but we are going to bring healing to the nations. And, you know, there's been a lot of really, really strong feelings going on the past two weeks along. If you did not have some kind of emotion, then I don't even know what the word is for you. We People have been deeply hurt. People have been deeply angry. People have been weeping. People have been shouting. People have been outraged at what is going on. They are deep, deep feelings and deep emotions. But our great high priest, the Bible says, can be touched with our feelings the feelings of our infirmities. Jesus can be touched the way we have been touched. He does feel what we feel. He does understand the roots of rejection or whatever it is that's going on. But the thing that we need to do with those emotions, first we need to give them over to the Lord, but we need to use them in a positive, constructive way. So we need to let those feelings and those emotions begin to be channeled in a positive and a constructive way to edify and to join and to heal. And so that is what our father's business is all about. We are his children. We're his sons and daughters. We need to get our hands dirty in the nail bin and weigh it all out and let it be equal scales and let it be equal for everybody. You know, the scripture that says he'll bring every mountain down, every valley up, every crooked place is straight. That is talking about a fair playing ground. The Bible talks about equity and justice and a fair playing ground. The mountains come down, the valleys come up, the crooked places go straight. And so that is the, the playing field. We all enter at the foot of the cross, a fair playing ground for everybody. And so we just want to, again, be participators, participators in this great work of the Lord that he is doing. And at a time in our nation when we, there need to be builders and there need to be people employed uh, in a lot of ways, but employed in the Father's business. So I want you to answer the call today of the Lord to enter into his work, to build and to heal, to edify, to plant. Uh, to pull up some things if that's what needs to happen. But we are his people. We are his sons and his daughters. We care about the things that he cares about. We're moved about the things he's moved about, the things that grieve his heart, grieve his heart. And so, um, you know, Jesus, again, is that perfect mediator between heaven and earth, between all races. He's the perfect mediator. He is the one that can understand what it was like to be God, understand what it's like to be man, understand everything that we go through in the human race. Jesus is the perfect mediator between all races, between all sexes, between all ages, between God and man. He is our mediator. And so we need to make sure that we are daily sitting at the feet of Jesus and we are gaining his wisdom and we're drawing from those waters that run deep and we are drawing from that river of God that we can be fruitful, we can bring healing, we can be planted, immovable, unshakable, and we can be extending and enlarging his kingdom. Do you agree with that? Do you believe that we as the people of God can be used mightily by God to bring about that. And so I'm going to read one more scripture, uh, Revelation 22, 1 and 2. It says, He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb, in the middle of its street, on either side of the river. Aren't you glad that Jesus is on both sides? Aren't you glad that Jesus knows how? to be on both sides of the river. It was the tree of life 
and it bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Jesus, our tree of life, he's planted on both sides and in the middle of the street of the river. Amen, Jesus. And so that is where we plant ourselves, in Jesus by the river. Amen. And so the very last thing I would really like us to do is uh, it's a prayer. And I want us to stand up, if you will stand up with me. You know, and I kind of wrote a, a few thoughts down in closing like a prayer for my own self was, you know, Lord, help me to represent my heavenly father. Lord, help me promote your kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. Lord, we declare that our strength is in you. Our hope is in you. Our confidence is in you. Come forgive us of our sins and heal our land. In Jesus' name we pray. But a greater prayer, even than that one, was written in, let me get the date right, 1181, almost a 1,000 years ago and it was the prayer of saint francis of assisi probably your mom or your grandma had this hanging in her kitchen i think you went in everybody's house and they had this prayer still have this prayer written on the walls and i just looked it up quick and it said that uh, this is a little story behind him who wrote this saint francis after living a carefree childhood and young adulthood filled with wealthy entertainment and pleasure, Francis fell ill at the age of 20, and thoughts be his thoughts began to focus on eternity and his relationship with God. Francis turned from his wealthy lifestyle and decided to give his life over to the church. He passed away in 1226 after rekindling the love of God among thousands so one man gave his life to Jesus at 20 decided to live his life for the church and wrote a prayer that people have been praying for a thousand years that's really powerful so you might be 20 in the room today and maybe God will give you a powerful prayer to affect the generations to come so we'll close by praying this together they put it up on the screen okay lord make me an instrument of your peace where there is hatred let me sow love where there is injury pardon where there is doubt faith where there is despair hope where there is darkness light where there is sadness joy O oh, divine master Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. So, Father, we come in Jesus' name and we pray, God, instruments of your peace in the powerful name of Jesus that we would go forth strong, Lord, sowing, Lord, sowing the things of the kingdom into soil, Lord God, sowing into the hearts of those that to, need to receive words full of grace and truth. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. All right, give the Lord a big clap offering. Thank you, church. All right. Okay, and we need to all exit out the door by the parking lot. We come in one door and go out another. So God bless you and uh, be praying. <laughs> Every